Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. So we're just going to get right into it. Treasure Hunting this week? Yep, Treasure Hunting. What did you do? Uh, my usual, went to Countless Goodwills, went to the DI, which uh, is the Desert Industries. The Mor Mormon place? Yeah, Nick. I actually went to the Desert Industries quite a few times and Nick actually introduced me that it was a Mormon place. Didn't have nothing much there. Went to uh, Dimple, didn't, didn't have much there. Uh, I did have, I did find one game that I wanted to present to you. That's in my bag here. And I'll just go ahead and bring it on out. Sega Genesis. <laughs> Wait, I'm looking at the back of a gray Super Nintendo cart. But it says, pre-owned Sega Genesis on the price tag. Yeah. What's up with that? I, I didn't ask. <laughs> Troy Aikman NFL football made by Trade West and Troy Aikman. Yes, Troy Aikman also helped make this. I believe he was the lead programmer. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's heck of a type. So kind of a gag gift. So I don't know if we want to sign it and give it away as, with a contest. Oh yeah, that that'd be cool. So you guys could, one of you guys, lucky viewers, listeners, could own a piece of treasure hunting history. Ooh, our first signed gift you guys better jump on this because you know in a few years it's going to be worth mucho dinero <laughs> yes so um is this going to be part of the um contest for the quiz like in place of the ten dollar gift card it could be in addition to okay so ten dollar ten dollar gift card as well as a signed piece of memorabilia that is troy Aikman football the greatest quarterback of all time Past, present, and future. Future, huh? <laughs> so, uh, I also did some treasure hunting as well. In between all the graduation stuff going on, I had two kids graduate. One from 5th grade, one from 8th grade. I'm telling you, those graduations are no joke. Oh, they're a chore. A couple of weeks ago, I had to leave work early. I took a day off one day, which that was, that was cool. I didn't mind that, but it's just you're running around trying to get everything done yeah and not only do we have our kids graduating but we had um, a cousin or two graduate as well um, so we went to that graduation so we went to a few graduations this week I actually took two days off of work so forget it uh, I'm just gonna stay home and focus on this graduation stuff so my treasure hunting let me pull from my pocket my magic pocket why are you reaching in, down the back of your pants <laughs> I have an itch. Prison style. <laughs> I, I think I know what this is based on the yellow tab. Where do you find Mutant League football? I have my resources. That's tight. We're going to play this tonight. I can't wait. Great game. You better not play it without me there. No, I won't. I won't. I won't. I'll test out my controllers for the Sega, but I won't play Mutant League. I'll like play Contra Hardcore or something. Yeah, or Castlevania Blood Bloodlines. Yeah, Contra Hardcore. That's yeah. tight. I found that at. Shout out to Fair Game over off of Fair Oaks. Wide variety of old Nintendo games, Super Nintendo, Sega, even the new games, uh, next gen. They have high prices, of course, because they're nerds and they know how much everything's worth. Went and saw Earthbound with a hundred and twenty dollar sticker on it. I just, like, just the game. Just the game. Wow. I was like, you guys are assholes. Did you, did you brag about you having a copy? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I actually brought in a stack of games that I sold to them. It was old duplicate NES games that we couldn't use anymore. They're duplicates, and one was a Nightmare on Street and didn't work. I knew I'd get a pretty penny for that. Mm -hmm. And mixed in my games. <clears throat> I put in Bubble Bobble 2. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Bubble Bobble 2 is a high-end Nintendo cart. goes between $250 and $300 all the time. And just by chance, Brandon bought it at Big Ten Video off of West El Camino when he was around 18. Yeah, they were you know, selling out all their old inventory. So all their games were for sale, and I was going through the NES. This was before we collected games, really. Just going through and I saw Bubble Bobble 2, I said, first of all, I didn't even know they made a sequel to Bubble Bobble. Second of all, this game's got to be pretty rare. 
and that I only paid like four bucks for it. That's hella tight. It's a game that I brag about all the time. Uh, so I brought that into Fair Game, and he's going through, you know, my inventory, going through, seeing what he wants to pay me. And when he grabs World Bubble Two, he kind of like, like he's taken it back. Where I could see it in his eyes. You know, um, have have you read the the Black Pearl? By uh, it was in Mr. Racine's class, where the uh, father it was Kiyokito, the kid who gets shot in the end. I don't. Maybe I don't well, remember it. In the Black Pearl, the the father finds a, a giant pearl, and everyone thinks it's fake, and he takes it to the dealer to sell it to try to get money. And underneath the table, I believe the dealer, like he, when he sees the pearl, he knows it's authentic and it's worth a lot of money, and he drops whatever he's holding under the table. But he tries to keep a straight face, and that's what that guy kind of did. He kind of, like, he was taken aback by it. He almost knocked over my stack of games that I had, and then so he keeps counting, and he says, "Well, for everything, I'll give you ten dollars." <laughs> and I said, "Okay, I, I want to sell you everything except for the bubble bubble two. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, rats!" <laughs> Foiled again. But he he's like, "Oh, shucks." What a shame! I was like, yeah, give me my bubble bubble two back. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll go in there and I'll be like, yeah, I have, I have Earthbound with the instruction booklet and the scratch and sniff stickers and just things like that. Only because they bug me because they jack their prices way up. Uh, it's not fair at all. And we just collect. I mean, if we find a good deal, we'll resell the game if we have a copy already. But usually, we're just there to collect and find treasure. So um, found Contra Hardcore at Fair Game. I believe I only paid seven dollars for it. It's a pretty good deal, considering it's a contra game. It's hard to find that. Out. So I'll plug in the controllers, make sure they work. When you guys come over, I'm making a Thai green chicken coconut curry tonight over rice, and some Thai uh, sh breaded shrimp. Oh wow! So uh, I love to cook. Uh, me and my wife cook. I know Brandon likes to cook, but I just like to find things on the internet that I have an interest in and just cook and just make new recipes and things like that so I actually sampled it last night Camp temp turned out really good so we're gonna go buy a few more cans and make a bigger batch so uh, we'll put we'll definitely be playing that tonight so we want to go into Mega Man 3 yeah let's do Mega Man 3 I'm actually really disappointed because I did not get to finish this game I had so much going on this week I couldn't find any time to play through it and the time I did find I only was able to beat the eight bosses and try the shadow bosses out okay so you want to run down your list yeah so Mega Man 3 plays pretty much like Mega Man 2 you have eight bosses to beat eight robot masters hard man shadow man snake man top man needle man magnet man spark man and Gemini man is that the order you beat them in? No. Okay, I was about to say. <laughs> uh, and then once you beat these eight bosses, four shadow bosses, quote unquote, appear, or four shadow levels. You have to play through the levels, four levels again, which are increased in difficulty. And each level contains two bosses from Mega Man 2. So you are basically beating 16 robots before you get to Wily's Castle. So this is what I did. Um, I went hard man first, then top man, then snake man, then Gemini man, then needle man, then magnet man, then spark man, then shadow man. Okay. Uh, mine's a little different. Of course, I did hard man first, top man, then Gemini man, then needle man, then snake man, then shadow man, then spark man, then magnet man. So I did want to point out on the Gemini man level. Nick was actually watching me when I started playing last week before we came out and recorded the next podcast. He, uh, we went to the Folsom Flea Market, Folsom Street Flea Market off a of lot. Uh, before that, he hung out at my place and we played a little Mega Man 3. Uh, played Gemini's Man, when I was playing Gemini's Man level, you would know the part where there's a huge pit, there's water all over, and there's a one up mm -hmm. and then an E tank. Yeah. I went and jumped for the one up. Got hit by a robot, continued falling, and landed on the E tank. And Nick was like, Did you mean to do that? <laughs> so bad, I wanted to say, Yes, I did. That was such a sweet jump. I don't know how I made it. 
was like, no, I didn't mean to do that. So I actually played through the whole game, went through all the four shadow bosses through Wily's castle. Nick, uh, I'm sorry, Logan actually watched me beat the game. I stopped playing. I didn't play the full game that day. I took a break, then came home at night and finished it. And I got to Gamma, the last boss, which is has Wily in it. <clears throat> and Logan saw the boss, and he he was like, "How do you beat that thing? How do you get up there to fight him?" And I was like, "Watch this." I took my rush jet up there, and I turned to Top Man. And just blew Wily away in one hit. That's my favorite part of the whole game. And he's like, Dad, that's awesome. And I was like, I know. You actually used a rush <clears throat> jet? You didn't want to climb on his hands? No. I used rush jet because I like the beating the whole game with the rush and the Mega Man and not actually having to climb up on his spiked knuckles. Those spikes don't kill you in one hit, right? I don't know. I didn't I never get hit by him. So Mega Man three, awesome game. A uh, little bit harder than Mega Man 2, in my opinion. So next week, we're going to continue with the Mega Mans. We'll do Mega Man 4. Never beat this game. I never beat it. Yeah. So Neither have I. This will be hard. This, this will be a challenge. It should be fun, though. So looking forward to playing through Mega Man. Uh, we're going to top five? Yeah. Okay. Top five list. Actually, a non-video game top five list. Second time that's happened. Uh, Brandon and I were throwing around order... Uh, I'm sorry, we we're throwing around ideas last night. He's like, let's do top five horror games. I was like, no, I actually want to do like a horror themed show. That will be our, our top five horror shit. But, uh, right, so I was like, why don't we do top five TV characters of all time, but before the new millennium? So anything 1999 and older. Doesn't have to be 70s through 99, just anything you want. So we're going to go ahead and start off. I'll start off at number five. I have Azrael Abyss from Saturday <laughs> Night Live. That's tight. Only because, uh, played by the great Chris Kattan, that character was so funny because I remember being in high school and I went through a little goth phase when I used to wear all black, but I never did like the black fingernail polish or the makeup or anything. Matt, shout out to Matt. Yeah, Matthew Chavez. Black finger now with what do you use big big pen or something? Yeah, I think he wore eyeliner too. Did he? No, I don't know. Oh. But um, and, and their intro song was the best, "Bella Lugosi's Dead" by Dahas, mm -hmm. and that was on the Collector, the movie. If you guys seen it during the the makeout scene with, with the, as a girl and the titties and the guy making out with her, uh, and the Collector's watching him about to cut her throat. The, that song starts playing, and I remember I was in the theater with Terrence, our good friend, and Brandon, and I was like, oh, I love this song. And the movie theater was loud, and Terrence didn't know what he said. He thought I said, I love this part, but no. <laughs> I was like, I love this song, Bella Lugosi's Dead. And Azrael Abyss had an older brother played by Jim Brewer, and he'd always come down the stairs. Uh, Azrael Abyss did a show on Saturday Night Live called Goth Talk, it's like a talk show that had a bunch of goths, and they just talk about all their normal stuff. They were in high school, and they recorded in their mom's basement. So the older brother would come down. It's uh, kind of like Wayne's World. Yeah, Wayne's World, but with goth people. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd come down and be like, Todd, mom wants you to change the laundry. And like, my name's not Todd, it's Azrael Abyss. <laughs> and I just thought that was hilarious. And then they'd have uh, Cersei Nightshade was his co-host, played by Molly Shannon. And Baron Nocturna came on as Will Ferrell. <laughs> and he's like, I work at Cinnabons, uh, the dark corridors of Cinnabons or something. And I just thought that, you know, Will Ferrell being Baron Nocturna and they had uh, Rob Lowe on there and I believe Steve Buscemi. Yeah, Tony Baloney. So it's Tony Baloney, the janitor. And just a great show. I recommend you guys YouTubing. It's very funny. Yeah, my number five is going to be Dylan. From Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> he was just, you know, cool. I remember I always wanted to be him. He had the hair. He had the leather jacket. And um, he didn't take shit from no No, he was a rebel. Rebel without a cause. Except for a surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> he got that surfing accident. And I was, like, devastated. I was like, is Dylan going to be okay? Yeah. Shannon Doherty was always wanting to be with him. She was on his nuts all the time. Yeah. Yankin. He was like the 23 year He was like a super, super senior <laughs> at Beverly Hills High. 
Yeah, that, that, that show was tight. I forgot all about that show. Yeah, so that's in my number five with Dylan from 90210, played by Luke Perry. What a cool name, Luke Perry. What a great name. Great actor. Was in The Simpsons. <laughs> Sideshow Luke Perry. <laughs> Krusty's half-brother, I believe, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, my number four is going to have to be Steve Urkel. Yeah. Only because... <laughs> Not because he was quirky or funny and had the catchphrases, but because he was a psycho stalker in disguise. I always wanted to wait for the part where Laura Winslow would be in the bathroom and she'd shut the mirror and he'd be standing there with a <laughs> knife behind her. A knife and a boner. Yeah, he was just... If it was current days, he'd probably be arrested for being so psychotic and stalking her all the time. It, it wouldn't be all funny or anything. In the show, they portrayed it as it being funny and lighthearted, but he was, he had that rapist wit, as said by <laughs> Lloyd Christmas and Dumb and Dumber. He just, <laughs> he, he was just crazy. And no, no one ever brought that up. He was always stalking her, always wanting to kiss on her like Pepe Le Pew, and jeez, finally got her in the end, though, I believe. I never watched the last seasons, but from what I remember... She, they ended up getting married. And he didn't even have to be Stefan or Kurt or Kel to get her. He was just plain old Steve Urkel. Yeah, that one episode when they turned into Bruce Lee. That was cool. Yeah, she was all being hoity-toity. Hoity-toity. <laughs> with about not wanting to date because he was a nerd, but he would do anything for her. And remember he got that one girl, Myrtle, was her name? Myrtle Urkel, oh. her, his cousin. No, uh, his girlfriend, Maxine. Maxine. Yeah, yeah, she had big old boobs. I remember that. I was like, dang, she, Laura's got nothing on her. Yeah, I don't remember seeing, I don't remember her chest, but yeah, she actually, the actress died of cancer. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. She wanted to go through natural healing and didn't beat it. Who, the Maxine? She died from breast cancer? <laughs> I don't know. Probably. Uh, my number four was actually Steve Urkel as well. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. So I was just thinking, you know, who, who could I put on here and Urkel is... I just love the scene when he would just tear stuff up all the time. Like when uh, uh, Carl, the dad of the show, one time he got so fed up he had to go. I don't know if he saw a psychiatrist or what, but <clears throat> he was given a catchphrase to say, three, two, one, one, two, three. What the heck is bothering me? And that's supposed to calm him down. And it worked out the whole episode. <laughs> it's how it all came in. But but when Urkel drove his car, <laughs> <laughs> when he drove his car through the garage and everything just came crashing down, <laughs> and he said that phrase, he said, three, two, one, one, two, three, what the heck is bothering me? And Urkel was sitting there looking at him with that pitiful look on his face, and he had to repeat that phrase like three times, and he was finally saying, it's you! <laughs> and he just started chasing him. It was just hilarious. <laughs> He's going to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, my number three is going to have to be Zach Morris. Oh, yeah. Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Uh, he was a cool guy. Uh, his arch nemesis was A.C. Slater. <laughs> And they always were like, what's the AC stand for? Stand for? And he's all like, all cool. <laughs> when you know it was really stand for something for like archery combine or something. Alfonso. Alfonso. Carter. Cumb Cumber Cumber Snatch. Cumberton. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Zach Morris, I remember, he'd always get into fights with Mr. Belding. And uh, we grew up watching that over the summer. And one time we went to the uh, Channel 58, had a... It was a, um, you could meet the actors. It was a, it was at the Sacramento Convention Center. Yeah, huh? and we went there and no one, was, they weren't there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was like Lisa Tuttle and Jesse or whatever, it, some of the lesser known it, ones. Is there Lisa Turtle? Turtle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, maybe because, you know, whenever they say they have appearances, they, they always get there late. So maybe we just got there too early. Yeah. But that would have been cool to meet them guys. Yeah. Do you remember... What Zach Morris got on his AC, or SATs? No. Perfect 1500. Really? Yeah, he was real smart, but he just decided to goof off. Got bored. Yeah. Went in more than high school. Kelly Kapowski, probably. Yeah. I think she was my first um, celebrity crush. Oh, really? Yeah. Not so much anymore. Uh, my number three is Balky from Perfect Strangers. Yeah, Balky was tight. 
when he dressed up as a ninja. Dude, that was going to bring that up. When uh, his, Balky was from a foreign land in uh, Perfect Strangers, he came to New York, played by the great Bronson Pinchot. Came, uh, le- he lived with his cousin Larry Appleton. Larry came home one day, and Balky <laughs> was in a black shadow ninja suit, creeping along the fireplace. Or like a bookshelf or something. Yeah, and he was uh, like stalking him, and I just <laughs> thought that was so hilarious. Actually, do you remember Balky's last name? Uh, was it Mepos? No, that's where he was from. He oh. was from Mepos. Uh, Balky, I don't... Bartholomus. Oh, that's how I thought it. Yeah. Bartholomus. Yeah, almost like our last name. And he was just, you know, he had the accent and just the theme song of that show. I, I had a chance to get it at Dimple season one and two for thirteen ninety nine a long time ago, and I just was like, nah, I'll get it some other time, and then someone else picked it up. Yeah. I should have got it. Yeah, Balky, you get back funky cat. <laughs> so my number two is going to have to be Homer Simpson. He, I could have went with Bart, but the first couple seasons of The Simpsons kind of revolved around Bart, but then they figured out how to make Homer just this great, stupid, lovable character. I, I believe the first funny moment I realized this is when, in season, I believe, two or three, <clears throat> when... Bart gives Mr. Burns some blood to live. Bart had a rare blood type, and so did Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns needed a transfusion, and Bart was the only one to give him blood. Mr. Burns was on the verge of death, and Homer said, you know, let's go get a a huge paycheck. This is going to get us some money. Let's go donate blood to Mr. Burns. So he goes and donates blood. Mr. Burns gives him, I believe, a fruit basket and says, thanks for the blood. And Homer's appalled by this, ends up writing him a nasty letter saying, you know, you smell like an elephant's butt or something. And he was contemplating on milling it that night. And March said, just think about it, see what happens. And so Mr. Burns, uh, or sorry, Homer goes to sleep, wakes up the next morning and says, you know what? I don't need to mail him that letter. It was a great gesture. Bart goes and mails it off. So Homer tries everything he can to stop from Mr. Burns getting that letter. He goes into the post office, <laughs> disguises his voice, thinking the post office late the post office man is going to know his voice, and he's Homer. He goes in there, and goes, "Hello, my name is Mr. Burns. I believe you have a letter for me." And the post office guy goes, "Okay, Mr. Burns, what's your first name?" He goes, "I don't." No. Yeah. And it's just hilarious because his name was never introduced in the series before. And it was just kind of hella funny how they just didn't. You, the Homer's like, I don't know. I don't know what Mr. Burns' name, first name is. And that's his boss. Yeah. So, and Bert helped him write that letter, huh? I yeah. I just remember them The laughing. whole family was around and Homer and Bart were writing the letter. And Marge and Lisa were like, Guys, this is so stupid. Don't do this. This is just so childish. And uh, I do. I, I feel I do. I have some Homer Simpson qualities when I make decisions like that in real life with my kids. I'll just like make not so smart decisions and later be like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have done that to Jordan, <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have scared Sam like that. But uh, definitely one of my favorite characters. Yeah. My number two is Cody from Step by Step. Ty- I almost put him on my list. Sasha Mitchell. He just had a great outlook of life. He was the Lambert's uh, cousin, or he was, yeah, their cousin, I believe. The uh, the black sheep. Yeah, he lived in a van on the property, and he was just always, he kind of reminded me of, like, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. From Bill and Ted. And he was just, like, so laid back and just, you know, down to earth, always chasing after Dana, uh, his cousin-in-law, I guess. But there are times, there are a few episodes where his potential shined when he just turned into a badass and started beating people up. Yeah, that one time when Dana and... Car- was it Karen? Because he goes to call her Care Bear. Yeah. Dana and Karen went to a, the snake pit the bar. <laughs> and everyone told her not to go, and she snuck out and did it anyway. So Cody's like, Shaw, they went to the snake pit. <laughs> they can't go down there. They're going to get raped. And so him and his uh, uncle go down there, Dana's father-in-law, 
goes down and tries to save them, and they're all getting harassed, and so Cody just beats all their asses. I think Frank does, too. Frank uh, jacks him up, too. Yeah, he does, too. He's more of a brawler guy, and Cody's doing all this kickboxer stuff. Yep. Uh, and kickboxer two and three? Yeah. My, my number one person could be summed up with just two words. Have mercy. Yep, he's my number one, too. Uh, Jesse Katsopoulos. Coolest guy ever on any show, played by the coolest actor, John Stamos. Great guy, great character. Uh, married to Rebecca Donaldson. Uh, Patrick, who's actually one of my co-workers, he, we talk about this all the time. He, uh, we used to go down the aisles and be like, have mercy, like all the time, because uh, someone would tell him to do something, or, you know, can you help me do this? And Patrick, he'd be all like, you got it, dude. And then I'd come down and be like, have mercy. And he'd, he'd be like busting up because, you know, he said, you got it, dude, from Michelle, uh, played by the Olsen twins. And just a great show, a great character. Yeah, he looks even better than he did on the show now. He looks like 20 years younger. He's just like never changed. Pure, authentic, great, <laughs> great gold. It must be all that olive oil. <laughs> and uh, Oikos. I eat Oikos yogurt over any other yogurt because John Stamos backs it. Yeah, and even Naja, my daughter, will watch Full She loves Full House. And I always talk about Uncle Jesse and like say, you remember when he played with the Beach Boys on the show? She was like, you watched that episode? I said, I watched all the episodes. So you don't know nothing about Full House. And she's like, yeah, he's always obsessed about Elvis and his hair. I said, yep. Yeah. Uh, Full House, we could watch probably every episode. We'd probably watch every episode like five times or more. That Whenever it would come on, we just watch it. We don't care if we saw it already. Kind of like The Simpsons. And I always name drop. I'm like, you remember Mr. Bear? Or you know Mr. Bear? And she's like, how do you know Mr. Bear? Like, I used to watch that show. Do you have any honorable mentions? Yep. I got Mike Seaver from Growing Pains. Yeah, I always put him on my list. Mike Seaver, played by the great Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Uh, I put him on the list because his best friend's name was Boner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how they got away with that, but they had Boner on the TV all the time. And he loved to shovel snow. I remember that episode when he was shoveling like a madman. Yeah. Uh, Didn't Boner die? In the show? No. In real life? life? Probably. Uh, I had Corky from Life Goes On. Yeah. <laughs> the one, that episode, I believe it was the second episode, don't remember. But Corky actually wanted to drive a car one time, and they're like... No, you can't drive a car. You're too retarded. <laughs> no, they didn't. You know they did. And he got in the car, put it in drive, and I believe he meant to reverse, but he crashed into a into another car or something. And he was doing one of a he was a, doing a tarred freak out. Jacked <laughs> <laughs> up. And uh, another episode where he was watching space alien movies, and the aliens were racing against cheese or dairy products or something and someone came over and he thought they were an alien and he was all like eat cheese and die yeah he had like a foil hat on and everything yeah you remember when he slept in bed with the woman for the first time no oh with that uh, the other retarded girl <laughs> uh, yeah um she had down syndrome as well and uh she said do you have protection and he said I'll protect you, and he just held her all night. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Someone on my honor mention is Mike Kelso from that 70s show. Oh, yeah. Ashton Kutcher. A lot of people give him flack. I like him. He's in some good movies, Lucky Number 11 and, you know, a 70s show. I just remember one scene when uh, they were trying to get a sign down for Hyde. Uh, they always smoked weed in the show, so... They found High Street. So I believe he took a firecracker and tried to put it under the lamppost and light it to blow it up and make it fall down. Mm. But it was a dud. So like, oh, so he puts it in his pocket. And then so near the end of the episode, he's sitting there talking to, um, you know, Red and Kelso or to um, Eric and Red and all his friends. And all of a sudden, the firecracker just blows out of his pocket. And I just thought it was the funniest scene ever in that show. 
Remember that 80s show? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> that was stupid. Yeah, Wang Chung. That's all, everybody Wang Chung tonight. That's yeah. the only part of that show I remember. Poorly made show. Do um, you have any more? Um, no. Oh, how can we not forget Will Smith? For, I know, Fresh Prince. Yeah, that oh. was a heck tight show. I remember uh, Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. Fresh Prince. Before Will Smith became all cocky. Is he cocky? A little bit. Oh. I watched Men in Black 3 last night in the tight movie. Boris the Animal. Have you watched Django Unchained yet? No. Oh, why not? I haven't watched it. It's such a good movie. <laughs> Did you watch The Purge? No. I saw that. I don't, I don't believe how you haven't watched Django Unchained yet. You don't like Quentin Tarantino? Uh, he's alright. I mean, you know, I'm not like a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. I believe I have most of his movies, but I, I just... I don't know. Sometimes he doesn't click with me, and I'll eventually watch it. It's just like... Like, he'll never say why he spelled Inglorious Bastards wrong. And I just think he did it because he didn't know how to spell it. Probably. And he just didn't want to admit that. That's what I think. Yeah, he's always on drugs, though. He looks like he's constantly on crack, cocaine, or something. Mm -hmm. Always going. But I think as a director, he's genius. He's one of my favorite directors. Pulp Fiction is one of my favorite movies of all time. Set up, set up for the top five list. It probably won't be in the top five because <laughs> it's above top five. Oh, well, why don't you go jerk off Quentin Tarantino? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure if you have some crack, they'll let you do it for free. That's okay. I'll pass. All right, so our weight challenge this week. Uh, I am actually down to 348. Wow. That's three pounds from last week. So moving in the right direction. The Overall, I lost 11 pounds. Just by eating right, playing... I play We Fit, not We Fit, can't fit on that yet. Yep. Fucking bored. Uh, we Sports. Boxing and baseball. Not so much the baseball that gets my heart pumping, but the boxing makes my arms sore, makes my back sore. Play a few rounds with the kids, cycle through and beat them all. Jordan actually beat me one time, getting me so pissed off. He was doing the move where you bob and weave, and he'd punch like every two hits. I was like, oh, Fuck, stay still. <laughs> and he wouldn't. And I just thought we'd be punching. And my arms were all sore. And he he beat me. And he was so proud. I wanted to kick him. <laughs> but I was proud of him. This week was, I was off. We had graduation. Uh, we had graduation week. Uh, and we told Willie he got to choose where his graduation lunch would be. Did he, he choose Oz? No. Why not? Because we don't get boners off of it like that. If you guys haven't tried Oz, it's the best restaurant ever made of all time. <laughs> all you could eat, cook it yourself, Korean barbecue, bulgogi, Tokyo X, they have the chicken, they give you rice with it, authentic Korean sides with lettuce wraps and sriracha. Oh, it's just great. I could spend probably every weekend there. Probably good that I don't because it, for one, it's 20 bucks a pop. Two... Probably not as healthy, only if you go straight Atkins, probably. And I don't want to do straight Atkins. I tried straight Atkins before. Put me in the worst mood of my life. Having carb deprivation, going through that, going through the cleanse for two weeks, even though you lose a lot of weight on it, it's not worth it. I remember I was on Atkins secretly. I didn't tell my wife because I didn't want to start a diet and then go off of it and fail it. And her be like, oh, you, why aren't you doing that anymore? Plus, she didn't like me doing it because it wasn't healthy. And so I did it for four days, and I was just craving carbs so much. And then she brought home Boston Market, and I was, like, looking at those mashed potatoes. Fuck it! <laughs> Fuck that diet! <laughs> I uh, probably gained all the weight back I lost just from eating. I was like, and you got extra cornbread? <laughs> And you got mashed potatoes? You know, she knew. She knew you were on Atkins, and she was like, I know how to get them back. Oh, man. That that cornbread and mashed potatoes and gravy is no joke on that Atkins. I just slurped it up and ate it. It was so good. Yeah, so guess where Willie went or chose for his graduation lunch? So it wasn't Oz? No. Mizu? No. Was it 
Fuji? Fuji. Oh, that's Fuji. Oh, that's your bane right there. Yeah. You could eat you some Fuji. <laughs> I, I tried to eat as much of the lean sashimi as I could, but the, I saw those rolls circling around the little boat. You know, those little rolls I like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had to. I remember we took Sam there, and he ate your ass under the table. <laughs> he did. He, he, he put me to shame. I took fire, Sam, to the Fuji because he loves sushi. Jordan likes it a little bit. He tries because I made the mistake and told Sam he was my sushi buddy. And Jordan wasn't any of my food buddies yet. So he got kind of jealous. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Because now Sam's all the time like, Dad, I'm your sushi buddy, huh? And we'll look at Jordan like, mm -hmm. Is Jordan any of your food buddies now? Your donut buddy? <laughs> no. The, he is one. I can't think of which one it is, though. Uh, it's one, something we both, oh, I think the pho, because I took him for his birthday lunch a couple years ago to get some uh, soup, and he liked that, so I'll let you're my pho, buddy. Was that at Wayside? No. Hove it? Hove it. And so Sam loves sushi. Brandon took him, we, we took him there. Jordan ate Chinese food. He had a little bit of sushi, and Sam just was eating everything under the sun. He <laughs> probably had 10 plates no joke, and he ended up getting a allergic reaction to one of the fishes. I don't know which one because he ate so fucking much. <laughs> it looked like little clams on his skin, so I think it was probably a shellfish or something. But he had octopus, he had clams, he had... It probably was a rock clam that he ate, and he just ate Brandon out under the table. I was like, are you still eating? He's like, yes. Yeah, and... um I bet Willie five bucks. I said, I'll give you five dollars if you eat this ball of wasabi. Oh, did he? At first I told Naja, and Naja, you know her, Miss Prissy Priss, nah, -uh, I'm not going to eat that. Not for five dollars. And so I said, Willie, you haven't gotten allowance in like 89 weeks. Five bucks. He's like, all right. I, I, I wish I had my phone with me. I should have recorded it. It was so hilarious. He, I gave him the ball. He ate it, and he slurped down his Sprite from top to bottom, and was like, Ugh. and I was like, just wait till it comes out, because that's just going to burn. He did it. He went to the bathroom. He said he threw up foam, I'm guessing because of all the Sprite he drank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I feel kind of bad because I ruined his appetite, he said. <laughs> like, he got to eat some sushi. He ate some chicken wings. They have chicken wings there. Uh, he doesn't like eel. I really don't like eel either. He no. he got a full eel roll, and he said it was too mushy. But it was I tried it. It was okay, but I wouldn't eat it. And so he he said his appetite was ruined because of wasabi. So instead of five bucks, I took him to Dimple. <clears throat> instead of five bucks, I took him to Dimple that day, and gave, bought him a Need for Speed game for the GameCube. It was twelve ninety nine, so he came up a little bit. Wow. I actually searched for that Super Metroid. It was gone. Remember I hit it? Yeah. Oh, someone got it. Oh, I'm sure they did. They always do. What's up with Willie throwing up and not being able to eat, eat again? <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to Chunking after that and like, let's just go back in. Okay, so this trivia question is going to be a little bit more difficult. Only because you get a sweet autographed Troy Aikman football Super Nintendo cart which has a Sega label on the back from Dimple Records. Yeah. Trivia question, what? Um, oh, last week um, the trivia question was pretty easy, so this week we're going to make it a little tougher. So this week's trivia question, name all eight robot masters that you fight in Mega Man 4. $10 gift card, signed, autographed, Troy Aikman's football, signed by us, cherish it, display it, put it up at work. Just don't sell it on eBay. We break our hearts. <laughs> oh, and uh, go ahead and look for, or listen to um, Tell Them Steve Dave. I believe it's episode 157? 8? 158, I believe. We'll, we'll, we actually um, did some advertising on Tell Them Steve Dave, episode 158. So go ahead and take, have a listen. That's one of my, that is my favorite podcast of all time. Uh, Walt Flanagan, Brian Johnson, and Brian Quinn. And Impractical Joker and Two Comic Book Men. I've been listening to it 
for years now and I could listen to it over and over again. Walt just has the best laugh I've ever heard. And um, yeah, we'll be on there advertising for our treasure hunting for nostalgia. So next week, game show edition. Holy crap. Episode 10. I can't wait. What? So what game show are we doing this week? Uh, I believe a uh, good friend, Nick Jones, uh, is going to be coming up with a sports-related game show edition. He knows Brad and I are not sports aficionados at all. So he said that he would think it would be pretty funny with the answers we come up with to some of the questions he'll have. He said he won't make it difficult, like, you know, how many three-pointers did Jason Williams have against the Lakers in the 1999 playoffs, Game 7, where the referees cost the Kings the victory. Nothing like that. Just, you know, simple stuff. Uh, I hope, just like, name a player on the Utah Jazz between 1980 and 1999. No. That, I'd get that one. 1890 to 1990. You <laughs> yeah. have a bigger span. John Stockton. I, ding. Point right yeah. there. Name of quarterback who was on the 49ers. Um, Joe Montana. Oh, yeah, he was Steve, on Steve was, was Joe Montana on the 49ers? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Something. I remember, I thought it had, like, I, I think the colors he, he displayed were, like, red and something, so it might have been the 49ers. He was my second string, second string quarterback. Uh, I, I don't know. I just remember looking at his elbow one time, and big all swollen, being all damaged, like, dang, that's a thrower's elbow right there. I was probably jacking off too much <laughs> <laughs> on the bench as second or third string, <laughs> Joe Montana. Or um, I remember my one of my cousins on my wife's side, a big Bears fan. Like I like the Chicago Bears. Oh. And, and I never just like a, a team that much. Mm -hmm. Like paint my son's face orange and blue and put him and throw a Bears jersey on him and be like crawl around on the floor or whatever. <laughs> but sports just isn't our thing. We I mean, we played football in high school, but that was because the sole purpose I wanted it was for the jersey. And that's what I that's that's why I did it cuz he joined it. I'm like I might as well join it too and you know, be there with him and so he doesn't have to go through it alone cuz I didn't like it at all. The running. No. The the good thing about it though, it got us in shape. Weight training got hecka strong, mm -hmm. stronger, and uh, eventually that's how I met my wife. So let's talk about that a little bit. First time I saw my wife was freshman year. We had the first period together, so pretty much the first girl I saw in high school. I remember looking over and she had hecka long hair, and I was like, "Wow, she's pretty. She's beautiful." Like, oh, I'll never be able to get get with her. And then so freshman year went by. Uh, second year sophomore uh, in the group of corner we had uh, in English class we had myself John Hammock John Hammock he was in my English class the guy who showed you yeah oh okay yeah small world right <laughs> uh, John Hammock did he play the same game no <laughs> he didn't Rajesh Narayan <clears throat> it was me John Rajesh and someone else some, a few other people we'd always be laughing and playing around and some, so Mr. Racine was like you know what, I'm going to split you guys up. Bartholomew, you go sit over here by the girls. And I was like, oh man, I was so mortified because I was just devastated to sit by the girls. Uh, there was Kristen McCandless. My wife sat behind her. I sat next to her. And I believe Sarah Loveless was in there yeah. too. And I remember just looking down all shy and they were all talking and then Karen turned to me and was like, what's your name? And I was like, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to throw up. And she was like, you shouldn't be looking down. You should smile more. And then so I was like, oh, she talked to me. And then so finally in junior year, I had the jersey. Let me ask my brother to ask no, her. <laughs> but that's not how it happened, remember? Uh, Roxanne asked to wear your jersey, Roxanne Cheryl. Did she? Yeah. She asked me? Yeah, because 65 was her favorite number. Oh, I don't know. Or that. something like that. And you were like, yep, yeah, Roxanne likes me. And <laughs> Did like, I say that? Yeah, and I was like, oh. And he was like, don't worry, I got someone to wear your jersey. I was like, who? He was like, I don't know. But someone to wear your jersey, too. I was like, oh, that's tight, thanks. And then so, you know, didn't even have to do any work to have someone wear my jersey. And then so the next day, I see some freshman wearing my jersey. 
and it was uh, Aubrey's sister Blair, and I was like so mortified because the freshman was wearing my jersey. I was. Like, <laughs> Did I do that? Yeah, probably Roxanne. Oh, something. I probably gave yeah. him both of our jerseys. And so I wasn't Zach Falcons. I was a freshman fucker. <laughs> So I'm like, Isn't he in jail now? Probably. I heard he like killed somebody. So I was like, nothing against Blair. I mean, she was a freshman, and I was just like, are you serious? I was like, dude, you owe me. You're like, it's all good. Roxanne's wearing my jersey again. <laughs> like, you have to ask someone to wear my jersey. He was like, all right. Like, you know Karen Page in your class? He was like, yeah. I was like, her. And then you went up to her, and she swears that you said, will you wear my jersey? Oh. Uh, did you? I don't remember. I was so nervous asking her because wow. I, I never talked to girls. So um, me having to approach someone and ask them a question that's not war- school related, I, I don't know. If, I don't know what I said. Okay, so she wore my jersey, and then the next Monday she washed it and everything and brought it back. And Ken Cheney and I were playing hacky sack in the hallway, and she came up to me and was like, "Here's your jersey," and I was like. Do you want to wear it again next week? And I don't know how I had balls to say that. She was like, sure. So we had to switch jerseys because it was a home game. So I was like, I'll bring it by. I'll give it to you and, you know, you're going to go to this class. I'll give it in passing period. So then I wrote a note to her and folded it in the jersey with my phone number. And it said something like, I'm not very good at writing letters. I really like you a lot or something, and here's my phone number in case you want to call me. I like you since ninth grade. <laughs> no, it's not Steve Urkel. <laughs> uh, but maybe I'll get it. I'll read it on the air. I have a few notes. We have all binary notes we used to read and w- that we still have. But I remember being so nervous, and that night she got the jersey. It was taped on there, and she must have found it, and she called that night, and I was like, I was up in the bathroom we had two story townhouse in Mor- <laughs> Terrace. and I was taking a shit and then I think it was you answered it I remember and did you say that oh this is Brad or, or what did you do I believe I, I I think I said this is Brad because I wanted to know who it was oh you fuck and then I think after I found out who it was I was like oh this is a girl that's wearing a jersey. I think I said, hold on, he's in the bathroom right now. Yeah. And so... Go and poop. No, Why did Matt say that? No, he said something later. Yeah. I'll bring it up. But So you bring the phone up, and you're like, it's Karen on the phone. And I was like, no, it's not. I was like, yeah, yeah. And you had that serious look on your face. I was like, oh, shit. I didn't want to flush. <laughs> and in my mind, I couldn't have flushed unless I wiped. <laughs> So I remember just standing up, taking it like a man, <laughs> shitty asshole and everything, just sitting there, talking to her on the phone forever for like two hours, and then so, you know, we finally said our, our good night, and my ass, I, I don't, I think I went in there and tried to wipe, but it was all probably dried already, I don't remember, and that was the first time we actually started talking, and eventually, um, first girlfriend I had, first boyfriend she had, uh, oh, John. No, he was never her boyfriend. <laughs> Should have saw the look Brad just gave me. <laughs> How dare you! You almost got socked in his face. It's good. He found what Kim? Him and Kim? Yeah. Uh, uh, she never should have told Karen that I actually had a little crush on Kim too. Her arch nemesis. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so we ended up getting married, having Jordan in high school, and still married. So. Uh, one time, Matthew, I, I was, this is probably my third or fourth time talking to Carol on the phone, and it was shower night, so I was taking a shower, and he brought the phone up and was like, Karen's on the phone for you, and he, I was like, hold on, hold on, I'm getting out of the shower. Hey, Karen, he's in the bathroom, and he's naked, naked. and I was like, oh, Matthew, little fucker. <laughs> That was heck of funny. We used to skip school and come back to my house for a little hanky panky. She would come over and we'd pretend to be sick. And, and I, I thought that was the most horrible thing you could do is skip school. I never did it. 
not one. Yeah, neither did I. I never did until Karen was all like, "Did you?" I was like, "I forgot to eat this morning." She's like, "I'll drive you to McDonald's." So I was like, "Really? Can we go to the mall afterwards?" like uh, okay so I, I skipped a little bit of school in junior year so we, we would come home I remember we had chores to do before our mom got home and I was just like oh I'm gonna I haven't done these dishes yet I'm gonna get in so much trouble and Karen was like oh I could do them she whipped out a whole sink full of dishes in like five minutes I was amazed I was like whoa I should have you come over more often and so apparently a girl coming into your a grown woman's house and doing their dishes is the worst thing you could ever do because according to mom according to our mom because I got in trouble Matt knew she stayed home for some reason our mom came home and Matt's like mom Karen was over this morning and she said oh really and he's like yeah and she did the dishes <laughs> I don't know how Matt knew this would set her up but mom what like the the mom on a Christmas story just goes and beats uh, Felch's ass for saying the F word. And I was just like freaking out. I was like, what? Yeah, she did this. She's what's the big deal? And she's like, ah! and she's like throwing her own hands up in the air. Like she wants to, to go like go fisticuffs or something. <laughs> that was crazy. I couldn't believe that. Got set her off so much. And then one time Amy came over, or Karen's twin sister. And while me and Brandon stayed home, we were sick. Well, not really, but we told our mom we were. Brandon and Amy are playing Legend of Zelda in the Ocarina of Time in your room. And I was making out with Karen in the other room. And all of a sudden, our grandma knocked on the door. Boys! Boys! Are you guys okay? Like, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Amy, Karen, you come with me in the bathroom. <laughs> And Brandon used to out here and drive Grandma away. And then so we're sitting there in the bathroom. <laughs> all three of us huddled in the small-ass bathroom. I'm standing in the tub. Amy's looking at Karen's like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is crazy. Amy's mad at me. Karen's freaking out. My Grandma's going to find out. She, she never did until we told her after we moved out. But just things like that is just so funny. Okay, so look forward to the sports edition next week for Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. I believe the week after that, we'll be in Las Vegas. Oh, probably. Yeah. Because this is Father's Day weekend. Looking forward to the next game show edition. Nick Jones is probably going to be a great host. Uh, probably going to be shaking his head, uncontroll uncontrollable laughter from him. Oh, I'm... I'm I'm looking forward to it, but then I'm kind of not because it's going to show something that I'm not so great at, and I'm just going to be like, I don't know, <laughs> like, like the the thunderbolts. What are those? The the chargers. The charger. <laughs> Junior Seau. I, I I know Junior Seau was on the Chargers. Don't know how. Was he? Was he? he and then Warren Moon. Warren Moon, I think, was on the Vikings. Yeah, and then I think he moved to the Chargers, maybe. I don't know. I think a lot of it came from a few sports games we played when we were little. Uh, I remember Danny Ainge being on the the Phoenix Suns. And the Kings. Were they on the Kings? Yeah, Danny Ainge started off on the Kings, I uh, think. I don't know. Uh, Barkley. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. going to be... Probably a lot of thinking, a lot of dead silence I'm probably going to cut out on the podcast. But we'll try our best and we'll see who's victorious. Uh, don't forget to listen to Tone and Steve Dave. Uh, we got an ad spot on the closing ceremonies. It should be up next week. Um, or should be up by the time this is released. Yeah. So go back and listen to it. Uh, looking forward to that. We, we said a little blurb about what we're about, what our mission is. And Walt said he'll read it, so that's very exciting for us. Yeah, sounds good. So that does it for this week's episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Happy hunting. See you later.